Welcome to the Self Girl Nerds Podcast. I'm your host, Marie, a courage coach, creative soul, and adventure seeker. Since through hiking the Pacific Crest Trail in 2019, I'm on a mission to help you embrace your most confident self so you can achieve your dreams too. If you're eager for deep conversations, big questions, and meaningful connections, join me on the quest to discovering how we can create a more magical and memorable life. Hello, nerds! How are you? I hope you're as good as I am feeling today. Um, I am high on life. <laughs> um, I Yesterday, so today's Friday, I am sitting in my pajamas after um, giving two live information sessions about my program Brave and Bold on Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, they went so well. The people that have applied so far are such beautiful, kind-hearted, creative, nature-loving souls um, that I'm excited to work with. Um, I gave, I poured my heart out in the workshop last night, um, and I've been, I woke up this morning to lots of messages from people who said, oh my god, I loved it, it was so, so, so motivating, I got so many insights from this, and I cannot wait to get started. Um, so that lit me up. I was already lit up last, last night after giving the, the workshop, I, I lied down on the floor, which is what I do when I have too many feelings. It helps ground me. I just lie down on the floor. I, I used to do that as a kid too. Uh, I would lie down on the kitchen floor because it was colder and it felt good. Anyway, so after the workshop, I lied down on the floor and I felt like I just had an orgasm <laughs> because I was so present during the call and so passionate about what I was sharing with them, uh, which is why I decided after today's main topic, I'm going to share with you the first like 10 minutes of the call. And if it speaks to your soul, just apply. Just apply and watch the rest of the training. So uh, you, you're going to be able to apply at selfgrowthnerds.com slash brave and bold. Um, and this is a one hour and a half training in which I share my three-part framework to creating a more purposeful and adventurous life without having to turn your whole life upside down, without having to lose your stability, okay? Okay. So uh, I also talk about my program, but even if you don't decide to join, you're going to learn so much for, from the training only. So take a few minutes to apply. Um, today's Monday. At, I mean, this podcast is scheduled, scheduled to come out on Monday and enrollment for this year closes on Thursday, September 8th. So I don't know when exactly you're listening to to this. Um, but if it's before Thursday, you might still have a chance to join us for the fall and to to embark on this journey with us where you're going to be able to transform your life and make it so much more fulfilling. Um, if it's after September 8th, then I have probably set up, future me has probably set up a waiting list or something. So Find me on Instagram and you'll you'll be able to uh, add yourself to the waiting list. All right, so today, today, I want to talk about all of these ideas that you have given up on. Um, how many ideas have you had in your life that didn't see the light of day? Because when you told someone about the idea, they were not as enthusiastic as you wanted them to be, okay? Or maybe maybe you didn't even talk about it. Maybe you just noted it down in a planner and then you cr criticize yourself the day after. You know, sometimes like I get a super good idea and then the day after my inner critic is like, no, this is a piece of crap, <laughs> okay? 
all of these ideas that could actually have have a massive impact on the world that you didn't take a take a chance on. I remember when uh, I had the idea for my book about the self doubt that comes with through hiking, with going for a through hike, and how to to deal with that. A friend told me, "Oh, everyone's writing books." Everyone's writing books like this. And so that those five words were enough for me to trash the idea for a few months. I couldn't put my finger on it at the time, but what that the message behind his words that I heard, that's not necessarily what he meant, but that I heard is you're not special. And that made me feel ashamed. Right? So I just went to hide back into the cave until a few months later where I decided you know what fuck that hope you're not listening to this with small children um fuck that I believe my idea is worth giving a shot I don't know if it's gonna work but it just turns me on So I don't give a shit what other people think. And then I wrote the whole first draft in five months with fierce focus. I was not going to let anyone else piss on my parade. Like when my uncle asked me, not just my uncle, many people asked me like, oh, how are you going to find an editor? What about publishing? I would swiftly close a conversation, tell them I'm not there yet. Thank you very much. <laughs> I was firm. I just wrote and wrote and wrote and wrote without judging what was coming out, without thinking about what I was going to do afterwards. Okay? My only goal was to finish the first draft. I cried sitting at a coffee shop. Um, and when I finished, I was so freaking proud. It was in August, at the end of August, just before I left for my vacation. I think it was two years ago, yes. Um, I was so proud. My heart could have burst. Because I had thought about writing a book for probably 15 fucking years. And now I had done it. I had protected the safe fortress of my inner knowing And I didn't let anyone barge in with their noble-looking limiting beliefs. Okay? I had to do exactly the same thing in order to break up with my last partner. I had to do this as well to pursue my through-hike of the PCT because I was scared uh, of what that might mean for my relationship. I was scared of leaving my partner behind for six months. One of, one of my family members said like, are you sure it's a good idea? They, you know, they might break up with you. It's a long time to be away. And at first that made me feel contracted inside, right? I was, I was afraid until I realized I'm a badass and I'm going to be even more of a badass after through hiking So, I mean, tons of people would love to be with me. Um, And even if, I mean, it's not even about being with someone. If I love myself and I love my life and I'm proud of what I've accomplished, that's what matters. Um, So, again, I protected my inner knowing and didn't let any other voices other than my own pierce this. And I also had to do that when I decided to switch from being a graphic designer to a life coach. (laughs) Okay. Um, Graphic designer is like a proven career. There's so many jobs all around the world. It's easy to find work, easy-ish. Easy enough to find work as a graphic designer. I was well paid. I had tons of of clients, con- offers coming in. I was building a decent career. And I was going to throw all of that out the window. 
to become a life coach. And life coaching is pretty new, right? So not everyone knows how valuable it is. Many people misunderstand what coaching is. They think, oh, it's influencers on the internet. No, so it's so much deeper, deeper than that. Um, it's helping people fulfill their full potential and go after what they want. Um, but I had, so I had, again, to protect the safe fortress of my inner knowing in order to keep moving towards my dream. Okay. And if you want to live life on your own terms as well, you're going to have to get really good at protecting these three things. Okay. Uh, protecting your 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 time, number one, that's going to mean turning down what's not in alignment, learning to set firm boundaries and displease a lot of folks. Because as I heard Ingrid Clayton say on Instagram this week, when you stop people pleasing, people are not pleased. <laughs> Go and find her. She has a lot of wisdom to share. So you're going to have to protect your time. And that's the first thing I teach my clients when they start working with me, how to make space for them in their schedule. Um, I also tell you about that in the workshop. Um, I tell you about the first steps to making time for yourself, okay? The second thing you're going to have to protect is your energy. And you do that by not beating yourself up, by not obsessing over every little details because you're afraid of being judged or you're afraid of making a mistake. That shit's exhausting. Protecting your energy also means prioritizing rest over hustle. And rest is not something that we have learned to do. Rest feels very uncomfortable. It's not something that's celebrated in our society. So when we try to rest, what I see many of my clients struggle with at the beginning is that guilt uh, that's so present when they're trying to rest. Like, oh, you should be doing this. You should be working on your to-do list. Why are you being so lazy? One of my clients this week was saying she felt guilty about watching too much Emily in Paris. And I was like, no, maybe you need to watch some Emily in Paris. <laughs> maybe that's how you're going to recharge your energy. You recharge, it, you recharge your energy by doing what brings you joy without a voice in your mind that's beating you up, telling you to be more productive. Okay, that's also something that I teach my clients how to feel at home within themselves instead of feeling like they're fighting against themselves. And lastly, the third thing you're going to have to protect is your confidence, your self-belief. So that means not letting other people's insecurities unsettle you. Surrounding yourself with other big dreamers who energize you instead of put your ideas down, okay? And that doesn't mean like cutting ties with the people in your life that don't dream big. It just means changing your relationship with them, maybe spending less time with them or learning to protect, to, um, to create mental distance between what they say and what you believe deep down. Do you understand what I mean? Um, I'm thinking of a client of mine who shared their dream with their partner and their partner said, oh, but that's going to take a lot of money. And that made them feel worried. But what we worked on together is instead of letting their insecurity get into your fortress, stand firm in your resources. And that looks like when the partner tells you, oh, but that's going to take too much money, that looks like saying, yes, and I'm going to figure out how to get that money. You are so much more capable 
than you give yourself credit for sometimes. And other people's doubts don't say anything about your idea and everything about their view of the world. If you come up with a business idea and you share this with someone who would never, ever dream of owning a business because they love the stability of a 9 to 5 job, for example, then they are going to react accordingly, according to their own beliefs. And that's got nothing to do with your idea and everything to do with how they would think if that idea came to them based on their own baggage and temperament and past experiences. So stop waiting for people's support. Support yourself. Stop listening to people's opinions. Listen to your intuition. That rhymes. That rhymes. We should make a t-shirt. Stop looking for the best morning routine or the best time management tool. Instead, manage the voices that you let into your brain. Okay? Be the protector of your time, of your energy, and your confidence. That's the only way to get shit done that you are proud of. There are, there are too many unwritten stories and unfulfilled ideas and not to be, and not to be forgotten, unfulfilled human beings. And this needs to change. So that's what we do in Brave and Bold. I help you finally be on your own side and go all in on your ideas instead of showing the world just half of who you are and what you're capable of. That makes me so sad. I don't want you to go through your life and look back and think about all the ideas that you let die. And I don't want you to have what ifs. What if it would have worked? What if I could have traveled the world? What if I could have moved to a different country? What if my business would have been successful? What would have been different? Okay, I want you to to try what your intuition keeps bringing up, bringing to you on a platter. So through weekly coaching calls and ongoing intimate support, I help my clients come out of their heads and get into action so that when they come out at the end of the six months with me, they have blown their own mind with what they could do. So now I'm going to share the first 10 minutes of the workshop I hosted about my unique three-part framework, and I will see you back at the end of this episode. All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this information session. I'm so happy that you're here live or that you're watching the replay. Um, Today, I want to tell you about how to create a more purposeful and adventurous life without sacrificing your stability. Um, So first, I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Marie. My pronouns are she, her, and I help high-achieving, outdoor-minded creatives like you step onto their one true path and love their life as a whole, not just their weekends and not just their two-week paid time off. So everyone here has been hand-selected by me. I've reviewed your application and made sure that I'm confident that I can help you, that you are ready to do this work and that I know I'm the right person to help. If I thought you needed somebody else, I would have referred you to someone else. I really want to make sure we're on the same page. So if you're here today, if you're watching this, you're probably one of those three profiles, okay? Hope you don't mind me using dog metaphors. My my go-to metaphors are dogs and pop culture, 90s pop culture. So get ready. Um, So you're either the smart and selfless striver. You feel like you're on a leash tied to so many responsibilities. You give your very best to others to help them reach their goals. 
But when it comes to your own goals, they, they can always wait. You tend to postpone your needs and your desires to fulfill other people's needs and desires. And you don't know how to make room for you and make decisions for you without disappointing people or risk losing what you have built. So that might be you. You might also be the multi-passionate meaning seeker. So you have explored all kinds of different paths in your life. You're good at everything that you do pretty much, but there's always something missing and you eventually get bored, you lose your interest and you lose you, you lose your focus. If that's you, you you probably like your job, pretty, pretty you're probably pretty good at it. You spend time outside, you have good friends, but it doesn't feel like enough. Like you feel fine, but you feel kind of aimless or purposeless. And your expectations for your life are really high. So you refuse to settle down for ordinary. That's the multi-passionate meaning seeker. Now the third one is the disillusioned high achiever. So your life looks really good on paper. Everyone tells you so. Everyone says like, oh, you have nothing to worry about. Why are you unsatisfied? Your life is perfect. Uh, but it doesn't feel so perfect on the inside and in your day today. Um, your salary or your status do does not turn you on as much as you would have expected in the past. And you know you need to make a change, but you struggle to fully commit because you think, what if I make a mistake? What if I lose the comfort that I have? What if I make a change and it doesn't make me happier? So tell me in the chat which one you relate to the most, or maybe you're a mix of both, like maybe you're chocolate vanilla ice cream, a mix of one and two. <laughs> So just tell me in the chat which profile you relate to the most. Smart smart and selfless striver, the multi-passionate meaning seeker, or the disillusioned high achiever? Which one seems more like you? Sana says, <laughs> um, I'm a neat... Neapolitan ice cream of those personalities. <laughs> That's so funny. We're starting tonight with a good joke. Okay. Um, what about the others? What comes to mind? The dissolution I achiever is like your life looks good on paper, but it doesn't feel good on the inside. This one is that you try a bunch of things but none of them feel that satisfying and this one is that you feel uh, tied to too many responsibilities so <laughs> okay so that says maybe more of the last one okay and uh, staff relate most to three Okay. And Maggie, smart and selfless striver. Yeah, okay, so we have a mix of all of them. I hope, if you're this one, that you have a nice stylish, stylish leash. <laughs> okay, let's keep going. What you all have in common is that you miss the version of you who was living fully, who had dirt underneath their nails, who didn't care what people, if people liked them because they loved themselves. And those feelings you might have experienced if you went through hiking, for example, or if you went traveling the world, but maybe just when you were a kid, maybe it's been a long time, but remember when you were like four or five years old and you were just playing and you felt free and you were just being your full weird self, you miss those feelings. Uh, you don't know if it's possible to get them back and to make them last. You also are tired of those three things. So wasting time on mundane tasks that leave you feeling numb and aimless. Tired of restricting your personality and getting stuck in small talk. So like I said, you're not shining as brightly as you know that you 
can when you're with people that you feel really safe with and you're tired of attempting to fit into a form of society that doesn't feel right especially after you've experienced experienced real freedom and joy in the past when you've experienced real freedom and um, my tongue gets twisted. When you've experienced real freedom and joy, it feels even worse afterward to try and go back into a box. So you want to be your full self, to make decisions for you that are not rooted in other people's expectations and that are not led by your fears. You want a meaningful purpose that fills you up with joy and give, gives you enthusiasm every day. It doesn't make you happy every day because that's not what life is, but it gives you a sense of enthusiasm. You care deeply about your purpose. You also want clarity about what the next step is and the drive to move forward without hesitating and freaking out and second guessing yourself all the time. And finally, you want enough time and money to have a flexible lifestyle that allows you to travel, to go hiking, to do art, to be creative without worrying. And you're wondering how, how exactly to be your own person, validated by yourself, no matter where you are, no matter who you're with. You don't just want to be your full self when you're with your best friends. You want to be able to be your full self anywhere. You're wondering how to find like-minded people and have deep connections with them. Um, you feel maybe that like you're in a sea of people on autopilot. Like people don't have the same kind of aspirations as you do around you. Uh, you're wondering how to contribute in your own unique way, using all parts of your potential. How to go in a direction that lights you up without hesitation and how to make lasting changes. But all of this with, without turning your whole life upside down, without having to, to move to a different country and start again. Don't wanna rock the whole boat. So today I wanna show you how that's possible and how playful and lighthearted it can be to create a more purposeful and adventurous life. So I have six case studies that I'm going to share with you tonight. So we're, we're, we're going to start with the first three before we jump into my framework. I'm my first case study. <laughs> I test everything on myself first. Um, so a little bit of background on me. I first well, first, that's not the first thing I did. But before I threw hiked the PCT three years ago, I would I ran a coffee truck business in London, and I was a freelance designer and illustrator. Um, so I've always been obsessed with freedom, seeking more and more freedom. But in those jobs, I didn't felt so free. So I went to through hike the Pacific Crest Trail, and when I came back. I really wanted to keep this fire alive. I didn't want to go back to what my life was before, but I didn't really know how to make that change. So I went and set out on a journey, tried many things and ended up creating a passive revenue stream that allowed me to transition from my job as a graphic designer to my business, my coaching business that I have right now. So that passive revenue allowed me to make it uh, a career switch and to do so without losing my mind and being worried about my finances all the time. Um, now I have a purpose that's bigger than myself, that lights me up and I get to make my own schedule. I start work whenever I want to. I finish whenever I want to. Sometimes I finish a bit too late. <laughs> I go kayaking at lunch this morning. I was with having coffee with a friend of mine, and I love that kind of flexibility. Hello, I'm back. So, did you feel called out by this description? <laughs> if you did, then go and apply, and you'll be able to watch the remainder of the recording and learn about how you can get there, what to expect from working with me, 
and more. So the link is selfgirlnerds.com slash brave and bold. Um, applying only takes two minutes. Uh, do it now so you have time to watch the workshop and make an empowered decision about what's next before I close enrollment on Thursday, September 8th. Okay, I'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye. You just listened to the self Girl Nerds podcast. Make sure to subscribe and to find me on Instagram at self Girl Nerds. If you want individual help developing the confidence to create a more meaningful and exciting life, visit selfgirlnerds.com today to learn how. Finally, I want to thank my friend Etienne Galano for editing this. And I want to thank you, kind-hearted souls, for growing into your truest, most courageous selves every day and making this world a better, more beautiful place. My name is Marie, and I will talk to you next week.